Well, Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and welcome, welcome. This is not your normal Shroud of the Avatar show. This is something different. Um, so I want to tell you about, uh, I just found out about this the other day. Apparently this was announced on the last telethon. And, uh, and this is an opportunity which I'm not, I'm not marketing this to you. I'm not telling you you should go out and buy it or you know you should get out into this whatnot. I just want to tell you about my experience with something like this because uh, Crowfall and by Artcraft Entertainment recently went through this and I took them up on their offer that they made in this uh, same way to uh, become a shareholder in the company and. So I just want to I just want to tell you about that experience and then go over some of the things in here that um, you know maybe you didn't know about uh, as well as if you're not interested in investing in uh, something like this uh, it's very interesting to see this information this insider information that typically only shareholders have or people who work for the company have um, and so. It's, uh, it's a different glimpse into Shadow of the Avatar and Portalarium. So let me just start by saying that what they're doing here is offering an opportunity that uh, you put in so much money and you're going to get shares in the company. It's some ownership in the company as I understand it. And I want to say here, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a financial advisor. I am a, uh, I'm a businessman. I am an entrepreneur. And, and I like to take advantage of opportunities when I see them, if I think that they are a good fit for me. And uh, so, but um, in no way am I telling you what you should do on this or anything like that. So, and also I should disclose that I am a business partner with Portalarium. Uh, we sell, we buy and sell products for the game. And uh, so am I biased on this? Probably. But I'm also a big fan and I play a lot of the game. Uh, I don't know how many hours I've got into the game so far. Let me see here. Uh, according to Steam, 473, and I played a lot of hours before I even connecting it to Steam. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, so let me, just, let me just tell you that, you know, we all dream of owning a piece of a company or being somebody important or, you know, um, it's kind of that, um, it, it, it's something that we have inside of all of us. As an entrepreneur, having started many companies and everything, I understand what it's like to be there and to do that. It's not all as glorious as it seems. There's a ton of hard work uh, to do. And, um, and when mistakes happen and everything, there's nobody else to blame. Even if it was somebody else who caused something to happen to you, it still is on you to uh to fix it whether you know it's your responsibility or not i think of my kids and how the other day one of my kids i asked him to clean up some stuff in the kitchen because it's his job to clean up the counters after uh after dinner and everything and he said to me but i didn't make that mess i'm like yeah but who's responsible for it <laughs> yeah the other person should have cleaned it up but they didn't so who has to take care of it it's kind of the same thing owning a company. So, <clears throat> okay, so, and there's, um, there is certain things that cannot be talked about with this as well. And I'm not gonna go over what those are because then we're talking about them. But what I wanna say is that in an investment thing like this, there are rules and regulations imposed by the government upon Portalarium and they must meet these rules and regulations. And if they violate them, it is a huge deal. I mean, I don't know what the, what the ramifications are of it. I mean, the least of which would probably be that they would just shut down the investment opportunity. But it also probably, you know, it could, it could lead to criminal charges, stuff like that. I don't know. So, but I'm just, I'm just kind of imagining there. I do know that they take it very, very seriously. And one of the things that, that is important about this is that this site right here, which 
let me uh, put it in chat. I should. It's in in YouTube. It is in the description. And uh, for you guys in Twitch, I'm uh, posting a link to it. So one of the really important things about this is that all of the information must be disseminated equally, meaning that they cannot take outside questions from media or from players or from potential investors and everything. They can't take them like through email or in their forums or, or in other places like Reddit or, or wherever. They must have all of the conversation here at this site. And that is because this is the only official location for it. And, and so everything that they want to address must be addressed here uh, on, on this page or within these pages for, for this opportunity. And because of that, you know, if there are people in the forums who are asking questions that are interested in whatnot, they get no reply, or maybe the best reply that they get is to go here, but then they don't find the answer, and it's because, well, it hasn't been answered yet, uh, and it may not be, because they cannot be seen as pitching the quality of the investment or encouraging people to go and do this investment or anything like that without uh, violating uh, these rules. And uh, so it creates a very frustrating friction, which I saw Crowfall go through, where there is this information happening out in the public in other locations of people making all kinds of claims. And you know, the internet is full of flames and there's plenty of flames on this and there's plenty of flames on the, the Crowfall one and everything. And, and so with that said, um, they're not able to address all of these things. And so those fires just rage on. And it's really kind of a horrible thing, but it has all come back down to the regulations that everything must be through this official communication source, this page right here. And so <clears throat> anyway, um, so there's all kinds of claims out there. There was on Crowfall, there is on Shroud here and everything of, oh, they're attempting to hide things. Oh my God, why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing that? And everything, and they go unanswered, and so speculation just runs wild. Okay, so what we gotta do with that is just focus on the information that's here and make any decisions based off of this. So let's, uh, let's go through this stuff. First, um, there is a pitch deck, which I'm gonna go through, that is um, kind of interesting because this has uh, even like I said, even if you're not interested in investing, it has some stuff in it that you would never know about the game, but find interesting. So let's uh, let's go through that stuff. And so, of course, Portalarium. Yes, that is the company uh, offering the investment. So they're based in Austin, Texas. And by the way, how the game is played, what the game is made up of and everything, I'm assuming that most of you play the game that are watching right now and know about it. So I'm just going to refer you to their website, shroudoftheavatar.com, if, uh, if you want to know more about the game or whatever. Or, or you can watch us play here after this video. There will be another uh, show where, um, where we're going out adventuring in the game. And, and I do have the game up and running in the background. That, in fact, is where the music is. Here's my character. I'm in a basement of my home, a bunch of crafting stuff here. So, anyway, okay, so, um, the title, uh, the current title is Shroud of the Avatar, and, uh, so there's some highlights here, um, so 60,000 volunteer testers, that's you and I who've been playing in the pre-alpha and, um, early access stuff, and, uh, we've ended up being the testers, hasn't been so bad, though. Uh, so they talk about their software uptime being 100% outside of um, scheduled downtime. And second largest crowdfunding game in the U.S., over 11 million raised. Um, and I, I looked at that number uh, after reading this. And I said to myself, I'm not sure that's right. And, but I went and looked, and that's crowdfunding, not, um, not uh, other investments coming in, which... I believe that this shareholder stuff is not uh, considered um, 
is not considered uh, crowdfunding. But I, I don't know 100% on that. So now I'm going to turn off my camera since it's blocking part of the text. Okay. So um, let's see here. Uh, this is a MMO. They call it, uh, you know, RPG. And uh, I, I really feel like it's an MMO myself. So real worlds, real exploration, real choices. We all know about this, those of us who are playing. So then some market stuff, 1.2 million active gamers globally. Uh, and that uh, Lord British and the Ultima Online team uh, were founding pioneers in the MMO market. If you didn't know this, where have you been? Yeah, so basically it was the first big MMO, uh, Ultima Online. So large and loyal fan base. Everybody say, hey, I'm here, if you are one of that large and loyal fan base, because uh, I know I am, and I've been a fan of all the Ultima games. I was a huge fan of Ultima Online, and uh, Shroud of the Avatar here, I was a little bit skeptical at the, at the beginning, um, but I you know, wanted to be here, wanted to participate, and um, so uh, anyway, and I'm having a lot of fun in the game now, so... Um, okay, so Shroud of the Avatar is second largest uh, crowdfunded game in the U.S. So 1.9 million Kickstarter campaign, 9.4 million funded through uh, the store, through the store at shroudoftheavatar.com. Um, so there were 64,000 pre-order backers. So yeah, that's that's quite a few. So that's 60, 64,000 potential players. Lifetime value per backer is $220. So that means each one of these uh, backers spent an average of $220. I spent more than that. Just saying, I did. Yeah, so innovative development methods. Okay, so this is a little bit more marketing stuff for those who have never played the game, don't know. Um, oh, it, it does say here they're very, th this high level of transparency and stand-up notes posted daily, it's really interesting uh, that um, they do this. I, st I stood in one of the stand-ups uh, uh, once or twice when I was there last in Austin. And uh, yeah, really there, there was everything. In fact, I filmed a little bit of it. And uh, all of the issues and stuff, uh, there wasn't any issues that couldn't be public that would like do harm from that. Um, but uh, yeah, so, and they have monthly releases and... Um, so, okay, let's move on here. Uh, the business model, it's episodic. So the episode one is what's gonna be released here soon. And then uh, there'll be more episodes. I think Guild Wars fits this same model. And uh, so they say episode one is available for PC, Mac, and Linux. And uh, 40 bucks gets you full access. Uh, and then uh, add-on store, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can get in there. So episodes two through five, PC, Mac, Linux, plus console and mobile. You know, the console and mobile, that's, that's, um, I just have to trust that they have a plan for that. I know that, uh, that Unity um, will allow for that. Uh, yeah, Unity will allow for all of this, um, and it sounds pretty incredible to me. Um, but it's what they say. So, um, and new episodes launched, uh, launch planned every 12 to 18 months. So episode two, once episode one is launched, a year to a year and a half later will be episode two. And with this game, you buy it once, you don't have to pay a monthly. And, but then when episode two comes out, then um, if you want to upgrade to that content, then you got to buy it. Otherwise, I believe you'll be able to continue playing. So um, here's the leadership, of course, Richard Garriott um, and executive producer Star Long, another great guy. Spent, spent a lot of time with both of them, both really neat people. Um, they've won a bunch of awards. Now the investment opportunity here, uh, let's see, 40 months of on time and stable monthly releases. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so, I guess so. So, okay, so that's the last, uh, that is the last item on there. So uh, in this pitch deck you can see on there, so that's just kind of the, that's the marketing overview that they've posted. But 
let's uh, now let's look at uh, the rest of this. So to reserve, this is to reserve a spot. So right now there's just um, just under 60 days remaining, and basically you got to sign up an account and you uh, reserve, saying that you intend to purchase this uh, many dollars worth of uh, investment into uh, Portalarium. And I've already gone through this. I've done this. Uh, it does require some um, some personal information. I looked it all up, and I felt okay about giving all of that. It is an investment after the fact, and um, so. And with that said, with having submitted all that, yes, that does mean that I am um, a, a uh, I am investing in this. So. But whether or not that's right for you is 100% up to you. So for me, uh, something that I wanted to do. So, okay, um, yeah, some of the stuff about the MMO market, 20 billion right now. Uh, they're accepting reservations, so they're looking uh, for a total funding of $2 million. And uh, this is, um, you know, some of the investment terms. This is Series B. Uh, minimum investment is 500 bucks. I know that'll ace a lot of you out. Uh, Crowfall. So let me let me go a little bit into the Crowfall stuff. Uh, the Crowfall for for Arts and Craft Entertainment that I got into, uh, their minimum was 100 bucks. And so it um, probably a lot more people got in on that than uh, than we'll be able to with um, Portalarium here, just because this is five times more. But let me tell you what that what happened after that. After I, after I um, did that and everything, and everything was accepted, uh, and the whole transaction was done, I uh, then received an email. I don't know, a couple weeks later, and it was to all of the shareholders inviting inviting us to a shareholder annual meeting. And uh, so I did attend that, and it was, uh, it was quite interesting because it was a whole back-end look. It was all confidential, so I can't tell you what was said there, but I'll tell you the kind of information that I learned. I learned um, how their financial situation is, how much things are costing per month, what kind of, um, uh, you know, how many staff are there and, and all of the expenses and everything, and then I also learned uh, about the the timeline for the future and where things are going and where they are not going. And so the the whole thing was very illuminating to me. And um, so I was um, I was pleased to know that information and uh, to be a part of that. Uh, and I was glad I wasn't the one running the meeting. Every other one of those meetings I've been to, it's been me running the meeting because it's it was my company, so, um, so yes, there is. Uh, uh, this is um, preferred equity, is the security type, and uh, their pre-money valuation is twenty-five million, uh, and their minimum to raise is five hundred thousand. So, um, <clears throat> now. I don't know the information on how payouts work or any of that stuff. That it's probably all in here, um, and it it probably you should speak to a financial advisor or something like that on that kind of stuff. I don't know. I just know that for myself, I want to be a part of this. So, uh, yeah, should put this on Shark Tank. Yeah, except the sharks are not the right people to do this by the way for those of you watching the video i'm uh, this is also going out live and there's some comments coming in so uh, i'm responding to those okay so um portalarium is a leader there's a bit more of a pitch here and everything uh product services okay i'm assuming that you guys all know what the game shroud of the avatar is and and no information about it and stuff so we're gonna skip this and if you don't know, then go to the or, um, you know, watch some of my other videos where we do gameplay and stuff. Uh, join us on one of the live shows and feel free to ask questions. So uh, there is a fan made trailer here. Um, I don't want to get a copyright strike on uh, on YouTube, so I shall not play it. But I have seen it. It's pretty cool. Uh, so media mentions this is this is the hype. 
this is this is um, you know the why you, you, this is getting you excited to to invest. <laughs> so the team story here, uh, in a nutshell, Ultima Online came out in 1997. It was the first really big MMO. Um, Richard Garriott and Star Long were a big part of that. There are other people on the team that I believe worked on Ultima Online as well. Uh, and um, it made a huge impact on the market and on games that we play today. So uh, in my opinion, these guys are, um, they are uh, leaders in, in going into new areas in MMOs and everything, and, and that's one of the things about Shroud of the Avatar, is it's dramatically different than other games that I've played. It has the Ultima Online feel to it, but it also is dramatically different in many other areas. And uh, those are, uh, it's a new experience for me, and that's actually one of the reasons why I like it. And, um, and continually through the Ultimas, Ultima Online, and, and this uh, has been new experiences, and so um, I applaud them at, uh, doing a good job with that. Uh, so this is a lot of team members. Um, guys, where's Bob? I know you can't answer that, those of you from Portalarium that are watching, but Bob's not on here. Bob is, you know, I don't know Bob in real life, but I see, I've, oh, I've met him, uh, and I've talked with him, and uh, in real life, and seen him on the telethons. And, um, man, you know, how could you miss an opportunity to pitch Bob? <laughs> I just got to say. Okay, so there are other investors in here. And uh, they're, they're listing some of them. So there is a Q&A here. And this is probably where a lot of the questions that are being asked um, are being answered. And so they asked about background and... Um, and the difference between the episodes and revenue streams. They talk about um, that they have signed contract with a Russian company. The Russian company is going to be, you know, I assume providing it in Russian and everything. And uh, questions about why is the cash flow change different months and everything. Uh, and the current cash position. Now, here is some of the dirt. This is some of the stuff where you look at this and you go, oh, man, I've never heard this stuff before. So, oh, his name is Robert? Uh, let's see, was Robert in here? I'm looking. I didn't see his face in here, though. See? Yeah, I still don't see him. Oh, well, here's a Robert, but it's the, it's the wrong one. Yeah, I don't see it in here. Okay, so as of May 17th, whenever they put this up, the current cash position is 528000 I assume that's money in the bank. And, um, uh, and we have uh, the periodic telethons, which typically net us in excess of 100000 uh, I did see the telethon. What was it, 118000 or something like that? So it was under one hundred and twenty. But um, so 500000 Did I say $500 million? Because... You know, if I said 500 million, of course, that's wrong. So um, so here is the terms, the investor types, accredited only and accredited and non-accredited. There's different rules for these, and so they have to list out each one of these. So um, the round size is 2 million. Minimum investment for um, accredited is 20,000. Minimum for regulated is 500. And um, so the target minimum is 500,000. Uh, otherwise, no money t gets taken from anybody. And by the way, when you reserve your investment, you don't pay right away. And you can change your mind before the funding. Uh, and there is a timer on the front page that right now says just less than 60 days. I don't know how long the whole process takes beyond that. But um, so there's a 60-day timer on there. And uh, so closing conditions. Uh, they need to raise at least 25000 in one section and uh, 500000 total. So uh, the use of the proceeds, this is kind of interesting too. So this is where the money is going to go uh, if the minimum uh, funding and the maximum funding. Now, I don't know who made this sheet right here and put this graph in here, 
but whoever did, why did you not use the same colors for the same things on both graphs? They changed the colors. So, um, you know, general working capital here is this um, mustard, light mustard yellow, and general working capital here is aqua. Come on, some, just, just it, that's just the thought that goes through my mind because it makes this hard to look at and read because you think that if the minimum amount here raised is, you know, this, the general working capital is going to be huge, but if they reach the maximum, it's going to be tiny. Oh, and for the colorblind? Well, I guess you can hover them as well. So, yeah. Investor perks. Oh, now, this is something that... Oh, it's a Jedi mind trick. Yes. This is something that... Um, that is... Um, uh, Crowfall did this. So they offered, and I don't remember, I don't even know what I got. I think I got another account or something like that for my investment in Crowfall. I don't remember. But um, there are some levels in here that is kind of Kickstarter-ish. And um, so at 500 bucks, which is the minimum, uh, there's Golden Armor and Golden Cloak. So Game Access meaning another account worth about 40 bucks, and then the Golden Cloak and the Suit of Golden Clockwork Armor. Um, now, I'll tell you what goes through my mind here is instantly, I wonder what that'd be worth in game. And then I'll just stop right there <laughs> because I want to wear that. So uh, I think that's cool. Uh, if I'm wanting to show off and if I'm wanting to represent that I am a shareholder. So, uh, $1,000, all of the above, plus a Golden Lord British Shield, uh, a tax-free player-owned town row lot deed, and um, a Golden Ornate Greenhouse, uh, a four-story row house. So those ornate uh, row houses, uh, the... Uh, the greenhouse ones, there'll be a golden version of that. And a golden clockwork raven pet. Yeah. So, and then $10,000 and above. Um, a tax-free player. Oh, so you get you get, you get get the uh, the other lot deed here. So you get actually get multiple deeds. Tax-free player-owned town city lot. Um, so city size, same as our guild is on. And... Uh, a Golden Kobold four-story Great Hall. <laughs> that building is pretty awesome. Imagine it in gold. Yes. You blind the other armies as they advance on your position. And uh, Golden Sword and a tour of Portalarium Studios. Travel expenses not included. And then 30000 and above. You get everything. Plus a tax-free player-owned castle lot deed. There has not been any castles, lots available for sale that I know of. Um, so this, I think, is the only way to get one now. A uh, golden airship, golden castle walls, golden clockwork pet dragon, and dinner with Lord and Lady British uh, and other golden castle owners at their home, Britannia Manor which I believe is in Austin. So that would be, uh, that'd be pretty cool. So castle deeds are available with the regular, uh, okay, regularities. I can't I pr pronounce that. It's where body parts go in those things. It's real life body parts or blood. It is a thing. Uh, reliquary, reliquary, that's how you pronounce it. Okay, it is advised to, uh, to consult your tax professional to fully understand the potential tax implications of receiving investor perks before making an investment. It's a warning on there. Okay, prior rounds. So, um, Series A, pre-money valuation, 20 million. Series B, 25 million. Uh, some of these are numbers that I, I can't tell you that I, I uh, understand. So, except for, I mean, this is the protect, this is the value at that at that money raise and at this money raise. 
So let's see here. Um, Series A brought in seven million. And uh, so, okay, financial discussion. There's a lot of stuff here, which I'm not gonna bore everybody with reading, but if you are going to um, be an investor on this, I highly recommend drudging through it all to make sure that you understand what, um, what you're getting into. So it uh, talks about the valuation, the market landscape. So this is kind of the MMO market growing, I believe. Yes. And uh, risks and disclosures. Okay, so there's some stuff in here that I, I read this stuff over and I thought to myself, okay, it's good to, it's good to, they're saying these things, especially for people who have never owned a company. And so I've seen some of the flaming going on out, um, out in the areas. And I'll, and I'll just mention again, that Portalarium is not able to comment on any of this investment stuff. They can't look like they're marketing it. They can't answer questions about it. They can't do anything with it, whether they can't, somebody says something that's right on target out there, whether somebody says something that's negative and not accurate. They cannot confirm. They cannot deny. They can't do any of that. And um, they, can only do, uh, they can only disclose stuff through the proper process through this uh, site. And, uh, and I don't know how long that takes. I don't know if it has to be vetted by some controller or something like that. But needless to say, there's a lot of crap going on out there being talked about that, that they can't answer to. And in my opinion, having read a lot of this stuff that's being said out there, there's a difference between somebody who's a player and somebody who, say, works for a living you know, you work, you work for somebody else, you bring home a paycheck once a week, once a month, whatever. Uh, you have a boss, they tell you what time to be to work and everything and, and what job you're doing. And if you don't like it, you quit and you move on and you get another job. Well, the, the comments that I'm seeing are from people that I believe have never owned a company before or never been in the operations of a company and been responsible for a lot of things because there's a lot of stuff being said out there of like, oh my God, why aren't they doing this? Or, oh my God, why aren't they doing that? What the hell? And the, the whole deal on that is, is that there's a lot of things, a lot of decisions business owners make and company owners make that, that are based on things that if you have no um, experience with them, you can only base it off of what you know. And if what you know is playing the game, then, um, and so if what you know is just playing the game, then it, um, it doesn't translate well into real life business. And uh, so there's a lot of stuff that's really off the mark out there. There's a few things that are on mark. There's a lot of stuff that's off the mark. And um, it's kind of a sad story about how this ends up being this way. So, but, okay, so there's a lot of this risks and disclosures. There's some stuff in here, a lot of you are going to go, no, duh. And then there's other stuff in here, you go, oh, I hadn't even thought of that. And that's what this tries to cover. This stuff that is, um, that because a person hasn't experienced this stuff, they don't, um, you know, they, they don't um, uh, have any, you know, thoughts on it or even know that it exists. And um, so our future re reven uh, revenue is unpredictable and based upon a single initial game that is currently in development, Trout of the Avatar. Um, the loss of key personnel or the inability to attract talent could adversely impact our business. You know, if, um, God forbid, you know, Richard Garriott or, or, you know, Star Long or, you know, there's several other key people in the company that one of them were to become unavailable for whatever reason, um, then um, that does have an impact on the game. So, um, let's see, they face competition, no duh, but they felt it was good to list that here. Uh, and I'm, I'm just kind of reading these headlines. I'm not um, getting into all the details here. If our game doesn't function as players expect, it might have a negative impact on the business and model. <laughs> Another no-duh, but 
it's kind of strange how much of this stuff you have to put out there for these things that you think of, well, that makes sense, you know, but you got to just put it bluntly out there. So, um, uh, players could choose other forms of entertainment, um, other than them. Um, if they, um, the game may have a short life cycle and fail to generate significant revenues. Um, let's see here. And um, actual results may vary from projections. Yes, I think you hear that a lot in investments. If the general economic conditions decline, demand for a product could decline. I disagree on this. This is one that I looked at that I personally disagree because having been selling games, we've been, we've been working, I've been working in the video game industry for 20 years now. September. This September is, is coming up on when I will have officially been doing cash transactions with video games this September for 20 years. And it is, um, uh, it is in my opinion, having been through a recession, that video games are turned toward to more heavily by people when there's economic change, as opposed to, um, you know, when it's, when it's good. And what happens, in my opinion, is that more people are searching for cheap entertainment. And so more people are coming in and playing the game. This game right here, a buy once and play, is the perfect type of thing for when the economy goes to shit. Because there's no monthly like other MMOs. And so it is a perfect choice for those people who want entertainment and are pinching pennies. We saw that happen with our sales um, in 2007 through 2010, 11, whatever it was. Uh, then, uh, you know, like our limousine service took a dive. People were not spending big money. But what was happening was, is that more people came in playing the games. They were just buying smaller amounts, but there was more of them. So I kind of disagree with that. Now, this is their, their opinion on that. It's my opinion. But... Um, um, video games are not immune to economic conditions, but, um, but in a, you know, recession or whatever, it tends to be one of the things that does well. Same with the movie industry. So, uh, okay. Um, now the, the one thing though with economic conditions, if war breaks out, war is bad for business. I don't care whether, you know, they're based in the United States and but the player base is global if big war breaks out it's gonna it, it really paralyzes a whole bunch of sales you know worldwide and it does for a while and then things come back i can tell you that during um so 9 11 here in the united states our sales just went to almost zero for a week um and they took a while to come back up because everybody was in shock with paris bombings um, different different world events go on, and um, and we see that we see these huge dips in sales when that happens. So um, that's just another thought on that. So operating costs are unpredictable. Yes, things can change. Um, if we issue shares of our stock, stockholders may experience dilution in their ownership of the company. What they're, they're not saying that, well, actually, I'm not going to say what they're saying. I'm just going to leave that statement right there. That's what it says. Um, certain future distribution relationships uh, have not been established. Okay. So uh, when there's no public market for the securities, if you want to, if you want to change, if you want to sell your shares to someone else, you have to do it as a private transaction to that other party. Uh, there is no uh, business that uh, will handle that for you. There's no stock exchange that handles it for you. They are not a publicly traded company. So, okay. Um, so a lot of this stuff, video game industry is subject to increasing regulation of content, consumer privacy, and distribution. So, um, yeah, government, thumb down. I'm not saying thumbs down to government. I'm saying that the government has their thumb down on it. <laughs> so, 
Um, oh, if the product infringes on intellectual property rights of others, cost of litigation could negatively impact sales or business uh, may suffer. They've done a really good job with that so far, um, but that can happen with any business. So, okay. So general risks, um, and then there is a bunch of other stuff in here, which you can download. They actually have their financials in here for the last couple of years. I'm not going to go over those, um, but it does show a big operating loss. And folks, this is where I see the most stuff out there of people going, oh my God, look at this. They're crazy if they want us to invest in this sinking ship. That's, the, that's what people are saying. And myself, as a business owner, when you are starting up and when you are launching something, it is a, this is normal. Let me give you my limousine business, for example. So uh, in 2006, uh, we opened a limousine service. I think we, um, we purchased, uh, um, we purchased two cars brand new and another three or four cars that were used. And our investment out was huge. And we showed losses the first year, even though we were bringing in revenue and we were covering wages and stuff like that. Um, the losses were huge because there was such a big investment in everything. And so until you like in the limousine service until you know you kind of reach that pinnacle where you have every car sold every night um or in the case of a video game until it's fully launched and people are embracing it uh it doesn't it doesn't reach that same momentum and uh, and of course the expenses are really high toward that so um anyway it just um um, I, I just I just felt the need to say that because I read that stuff out there and I thought that the people that were saying that stuff are totally off the mark. And that's just my opinion. But um, anyway. Okay, so that is... Um, oh yeah, what is CF regulation? Uh, making an investment. Uh, so I kind of mentioned the stuff. Uh, you got you to gotta plan to wire the money or you got to hook up a bank account to fund it. They won't take any money until... And until whatever time, probably when that counter ends up, they, I, I got an email saying that they would let me know when it was time to fund, and then, um, but I still have to go myself and press a button to fund it. It's not just going to be like, oh, I forgot about that, and shit, there goes that money. Not going to be like that. So, plenty of time to change your mind. You can sign up right now to reserve your investment, but it doesn't bind you into uh, actually uh, funding it in the end. So anyway, okay, so that's, that's pretty, much, um, pretty much the rest of it here. And so I'm not, an, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but I wanted to cover this, one, because I love the game, and two, I decided that it's right for me. And uh, so I just decided that, um, that I'm, I'm going to do it. So um, you, you may someday see me running around with a golden cape and... Uh, and the uh, golden armor. Um, but beyond that, it's just up to you guys whether or not it's something you want to get involved in and do your homework on it. Um, so make sure it's a, it's a right thing for you. Okay, those of you watching on YouTube, uh, we are going to have uh, another episode coming up here. I'm going to put a link in the, in the uh, chat here, YouTube. We're going to continue on there. We'll go offline for a couple of minutes. Those of you in Twitch, don't go anywhere. Stay right where you're at. And, um, and uh, we're going to be into, uh, into the next uh, section here in just a moment. So be right back.